Chucky's hair for him. I know. Mm -hmm. Hair and makeup? Charles Lee Ray, better known as Chucky, has terrorized Tots for over 30 years. And with not just one, but two new incarnations just around the corner, it's the perfect time to unbox the complex history behind our favorite pint-sized slasher. But what was Chucky's original origin? How did they bring the devious doll to life? And why are there now two Chuckies competing to steal our souls? I'm Andy, and this is the true story of Child's Play. Let's start with the script. Writer Don Mancini was just a junior in college when he finished the first draft of what would become Child's Play. The son of a career ad man, Mancini was well aware of the manipulative marketing tactics toy companies use to snare kids. Wow! And deeply disturbed by the feeding frenzy he witnessed over the unbelievably popular Cabbage Patch Kids and My Buddy Dolls of the early 80s. He started work on a darkly satirical horror script about the dangers of commercialism on a growing mind, and came up with the idea of a killer doll thanks to some inspiration from the Twilight Zone's Talking Tina, and a segment from the 1975 TV movie called Trilogy of Terror. It was never the most original concept, but in a post-Gremlins world, animatronics had advanced enough where a terrorizing toy could be fully realized in a feature-length film. <laughs> I don't believe it. I just don't believe it. Originally called Batteries Not Included, Mancini changed the title after hearing that Steven Spielberg had a movie in the works with the exact same name. Right. Now known as Blood Buddy, ew, <laughs> gross. Now known as Blood Buddy, the script portrayed a very different doll than the one we know and fear today. Back then, dolls that cried, spit up, and wet themselves were all the rage, so Mancini imagined a My Buddy doll filled with fake blood. And when a lonely boy named Andy mixes his blood with the toys, the two form an infernal bond. Instead of being possessed by the soul of a serial killer, Chucky was a manifestation of Andy's loneliness and despair, who came to life when his owner was asleep and sought vengeance against the eight-year-old's enemies. Metal. The script bounced around Hollywood for a few years until it came across the desk of David Kirshner, the producer of An American Tale, who was looking to expand his horror horizons. Kirshner drew the very first concept art of Chucky, but he realized there was something missing from the story. With Andy as the driving force behind the murders, the audience didn't really have a hero that they could sympathize with. So he hired writers to punch up Mancini's script and gave Chucky a new origin. One where a serial killer named Charles Lee Ray is killed in a toy store shootout and transfers his soul into a smiling plastic pal. Mancini was against the idea. How dare they bastardize his baby, his work? But do you think that the Hollywood machine gives a shit? I don't give a shit which ones. Wrestling pictures! After one last name change to Child's Play, the film was given the green light by MGM, and it was time for The Shoot. MGM shopped the script around to various directors like William Friedkin and Irving Kirshner, but eventually landed on Tom Holland. No relation, not Spider-Man, this was the 80s. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Fresh off of Fright Night and Psycho 2, Holland brought his horror bona fides to the project, along with a secret weapon. During pre-production of Child's Play, the director briefly dipped to make a Whoopi Goldberg action movie called Fatal Beauty, which featured a sadistic villain played by a character actor named Brad Dorff. Not till I give the sign. Not till I give to someone. Who Holland quickly brought on board to play Chucky. Dorif doing his best Jack Nicholson impersonation best gave the doll the perfect mix of rage, cruelty, and comedy. And now that Chucky had a voice, it was time to bring him to life. Not with voodoo or electricity or blood, but with state-of-the-art animatronics. Remember, one of the driving forces behind Child's Play was taking the classic killer doll cliche to the next level. Hello, Andy. With cutting edge puppets that push the limits of late 80s technology. 
So Kevin Yeager, best known for his work on Nightmare on Elm Street and Tales from the Crypt, designed and built the complex Chucky animatronics for the film. But in practice, it was actually kind of a nightmare to work with. Since Dorf's lines were all pre-recorded, the 11 puppeteers hard at work beneath the set had an extremely hard time getting Chucky's mouth to match his voice. And simple actions like pushing a button required 27 takes to get right. God damn. Even when the technology did work, the script required a range of motion beyond the puppet's capabilities. So they dressed up actual humans in good guy clothes for certain scenes, which required building an all new set at 30% scale, since no one was actually as small as Chucky. At times, a two year old stood in for the serial killer. And for scenes where Chucky was set on fire, they turned to actor Ed Gale of Howard the Duck fame. In the first child's play shot, almost everything that Chucky shot, and the editors chose what to use and what not to use. By all accounts, it was a rough shoot. And things didn't get any easier once the film was in the can, because the first test screening was a total disaster. Tom Holland's first cut was over two hours long, featured way too much Chucky, and for some bizarre reason replaced Brad Dorff's voice with Jessica Walters, aka Lucille Bluth. This does not bode well. The producers removed Holland from the film, brought back Brad, and cut out a full half hour of extraneous Chucky shots and boring police investigations. Much like Jaws and Alien, they correctly realized that less is more when it comes to horror. And when the film was finally released, it became a surprise hit. It was the second highest grossing horror film of 1988, just below The Dream Master. And while that's not exactly an end game level achievement, it was enough to jumpstart a brand new horror franchise, complete with sequels. Child's Play was an extremely controversial film at the time. Parents protested the studio, saying Chucky would be a bad influence on their kids. No shit. And even though the movie was a success, its distributor United Artists dropped the IP like a bad habit. After it was sold to a new company, they wanted to focus on family-friendly films instead. Universal snatched up the rights and greenlit a sequel, and despite being shut out of the film's first production, Don Mancini happily took the reins and became the driving force for the next six movies. Child's Play 2 continued the Andy Barclay saga, and as a film, it was pretty much more of the same. <laughs> but the amazing finale in The Good Guy Factory is one of the most memorable set pieces in the history of horror. As the series evolved, Chucky took a page from Freddy Krueger's handbook. He leaned heavy into one-liners and wisecracks, and the quips began to outpace the kills. <laughs> Don't f with the Chuck. <laughs> By the time Child's Play 3 came around, the series was already running out of steam, and the tale of a teenage Andy still tangling with his childhood toy was a creative and financial failure. Mancini was pretty much out of ideas, and the series was put on the shelf for seven years until Scream inspired him to take it in a bold new direction. Bride of Chucky embraced the silliness at the heart of the franchise. We're dolls, you dope! Oh my god, what are we gonna do? <laughs> Ditching Andy, the name Child's Play, at any pretense of seriousness to deliver a campy cult classic about a doll, the woman he loves, and their unholy spawn. And whether it was the new look, new vibe, or Chucky's legendary appearance on Monday Nitro, Bride was a big hit. But for the sequel, Mancini wanted to do something very different. As an openly gay man, he wrote Seed of Chucky as an exploration of LGBTQ themes, about Chucky and Tiffany's child, Glenn slash Glenda, and their struggle with gender dysphoria. The studio spinelessly rejected the script, and it would take nearly six more years for Seed to see the light of day. Sadly, the momentum from Bride was long gone by that point, and Seed failed to take root at the box office. It's a little botanical humor for you. Hello? Mancini kept the franchise alive with the two direct-to-DVD films, Curse of Chucky and Cult of Chucky, which returned the doll to his horror roots and reunited him with Andy. 
played by the original actor all grown up. In the meantime, Mancini also developed a taste for TV and was heavily involved in Hannibal and Channel Zero. You sound like Hannibal Lecter. I can't believe they canceled that show. And is currently producing a Chucky series set to air on Sci-Fi in 2020. One that's completely unrelated to the theatrical Child's Play reboot. So, how are there two competing Chuckies in the marketplace? Well, when United Artists gave away the IP, the characters and the chance to make sequels, they retained their ownership of the original film and the right to produce a remake. It's not unheard of. James Bond went through a similar situation with Never Say Never Again and Thunderball. And with the battle lines drawn, it's time for these toys to take each other on. On the one hand, the Smart House approach is an interesting new take on the premise, and I'm always here for Aubrey Plaza and Mark Hamill. I mean, I will miss Brad Dorf, but let's face it, he's sounding pretty rough these days. <laughs> Plus, with all the supernatural voodoo shit out of the window, it seems at least a little closer to Mancini's original vision. Of course, Mancini himself has been pretty vocal about where he stands on the remake, along with star Jennifer Tilly, and I can kinda see where they're coming from. It's pretty rare for a long-running slasher to maintain any semblance of continuity, but the Chucky in the upcoming TV series is the exact same character we first met in 1988. It's almost comforting in as much as a possessed, murderous potty mouth toy can be comforting. But until the dust settles and the dolls do get out, we'll just have to wait and see which good guy is best guy. You know what they say. You just can't keep a good guy down. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I want to know, are you excited for the new Chucky? Are you a fan of the Mark Hamill casting? Or do you have somebody better in mind? Let me know in the comments. As always, please subscribe to Now This Nerd. And if you see Chucky, oh my. Well, where were you?